Hello, online pipe community. This is Ethan, parsimonious piper. Father Brian, Potter Piper. And uh, we are going to be covering the first letter in C.S. Lewis screw tape letters today. Let's go. My dear Wormwood, I note what you say about guiding your patient's reading and taking care that he sees a good deal of his materialist friend. But are, are you not being a trifle naive? It sounds as if you supposed that argument was the way to keep him out of the enemy's clutches. That might have been so if he had lived a few centuries earlier. At that time, the humans still knew pretty well when a thing was proved and when it was not. And if it was proved, they really believed it. They still connected thinking with doing and were prepared to alter their way of life as a result of a chain of reasoning. But what with the weekly press and other such weapons, we have largely altered that. Your man has been accustomed, ever since he was a boy, to having a dozen incompatible philosophies dancing together inside his head. He doesn't think of doctrines as primarily true or false, but as academic or practical, outworn or contemporary, conventional or ruthless. Jargon, not argument, is your best ally in keeping him from the church. Don't waste time trying to make him think that materialism is true Make him think it is strong or stark or courageous, that it is the philosophy of the future. That's the sort of thing he cares about. The trouble about argument is that it moves the whole struggle onto the enemy's own ground. He can argue too, whereas in really practical propaganda of the kind I am suggesting, he's been shown for centuries to be greatly the inferior of our father below. By the very act of arguing, you awake the patient's reason, and once it is awake, who can foresee the result? Even if a particular train of thought can be twisted so as to end in our favor, you will find that you have been strengthening in your patient the fatal habit of attending to universal issues and withdrawing his attention from the stream of immediate sense experiences. Your business is to fix his attention on the stream. Teach him to call it real life and don't let him ask what he means by real. Remember, he is not, like you, a pure spirit. Never having been a human, oh, that abominable advantage of the enemies. You don't realize how enslaved they are to the pressure of the ordinary. I once had a patient, a sound atheist, who used to read in the British Museum. One day, as he sat reading, I saw a train of thought in his mind beginning to go the wrong way. The enemy, of course, was at his elbow in a moment. Before I knew where I was, I saw my 20 years work beginning to totter. If I had lost my head and begun to attempt a defense by argument, I should have been undone. But I was not such a fool. I struck instantly at the part of the man which I had best under my control and suggested that it was just about time he had some lunch. The enemy presumably made the counter suggestion. Well, you know how you can never quite overhear what he says to them that this was more important than lunch. At least I think that must have been his line for when I said quite, in fact, much too important to tackle at the end of a morning, the patient brightened up considerably. And by the time I had added, much better come back after lunch and go into it with a fresh mind, he was already halfway to the door. Once he was in the street, the battle was won. I showed him a newsboy shouting the midday paper and a number 73 bus going past and before he reached the bottom of the steps, I had got into him an unalterable conviction that whatever odd ideas might come into a man's head when he was shut up alone with his books, a healthy dose of real life, by which he meant the bus and the newsboy, was enough to show him that that sort of thing just couldn't be true. He knew he'd had a narrow escape, and in later years was fond of talking about that our inarticulate sense for actuality, which is our ultimate safeguard against the aberrations of mere logic. He is now safe in our Father's house. You begin to see the point. Thanks to processes which we set at work in them centuries ago, they find it all but impossible to believe in the unfamiliar while the familiar is before their eyes. Keep pressing home on him the ordinariness of things. Above all, do not attempt to use science. I mean, the real sciences, as a defense against Christianity. They will positively encourage him to think about realities he can't touch and see. There have been sad cases among the modern physicists. 
If he must dabble in science, keep him on economics and sociology. Don't let him get away from that invaluable real life. But the best of all is to let him read no science, but to give him a grand general idea that he knows it all and that everything he happens to have picked up in casual talk and reading is the results of modern investigation. Do remember, you are there to fuddle him. From the way some of you young fiends talk, anyone would suppose it was our job to teach. Your affectionate uncle, Scrutate. Thank you, Ethan. So Lewis has screw tape talking to his nephew. And first, if, I was going to say advising him, but actually correcting him that it's not argument or reason that's going to help you bring him to our father's house. In this reference, he's referring to the, uh, to the evil one. And he tells him that keep him in jargon. Don't keep him in argument. Don't keep him... Uh, don't keep him in reason. Don't waste, as you said, don't waste time trying to make him think that materialism is true. Make him think that it's it's the sign of the times, it's strong, and so forth. So he's talking about reason. Don't go on the enemy's court. And the enemy, in this case, would be God. Keep jargon. Keep keep using different terms and so forth of, of the times. And then he goes into an example and he goes into an example and I'm gonna give one of my own uh, as I was able to even reflect, reflect on my own life with, I find that when I go to uh, prayer time and I don't mean spontaneous prayer throughout the day, but when I go to my set aside, set aside prayer time, I find that's when I'm the clearest on what I need to do in my daily life, the mm -hmm. task I need to take care of. And then I come to a situation. Do I hurry up and go do it and then come back to my, uh, to my prayer time? And I've done that. Uh, I've done that before. And then a lot of times I don't get back to it. And so as uh, Lewis says, I start concentrating on the ordinariness of my life. And, uh, and he says, you know, very clearly, keep them fuddled. Don't let them reason. Don't let them get stuck on, on argument. Uh, even talks about the sciences, that the sciences uh, can lead to reason, can lead to thinking of universal things. Uh, and I think a word we can use today is, uh, screw tape would say we're not interested in critical thinking we're really not interested in thinking at all we want them to uh, follow that stream of consciousness from one philosophy to another one thought uh, to another uh, so I found this a very appropriate uh, first let uh, first letter uh, from uh, from screw tape I liked it too. Uh, I well, I, I like all of them because he he brings up such interesting points. Uh, another thing he brought out in this one uh, that jumped out uh, to me was his distinction on keeping humans focused on what we call real life, uh, and not letting us really think about well, but what is real? Is spiritual life real? Is is what we have here in the the temporary? Uh, is it the only thing that's real, the physical, or when we start thinking about universal and uh, metaphysical and eternal, are, are those things just as real as the things that we can't uh, feel and see? Uh, and and to uh, keeping us distracted away from those things has certainly been wildly successful in uh, the last couple of generations. I couldn't uh, I couldn't agree more. And just to have you know, Lewis kind of, you know, challenge us to think, as he says in his preface, to think about our lives from a different point uh, of view. You know, how could the diabolical want to thwart, uh, thwart our daily life and to befuddle us and to get us not to think of the real? And even as he says, as you said, what is real? And uh, as Screwtape challenges, you know, his nephew that, you know, don't worry about whether materialism 
is true. Get them to think it's it's the strongest answer. It's it's the best for right now for the practical way of life. I'm you know I'm trying to live. Get caught up in the busyness of life and the ordinary. That's how it's going to show you're really uh, being fruitful, or well, he would use that word, or prospering. And but you know to don't stop and have him start to really think think of the meaning of life right so well that's absolutely fantastic folks i hope you have enjoyed this first letter and uh, and our little chit chat about it um we will be back hopefully next monday uh, with another uh letter for you to uh to be entertained and to make you think so with that folks parting words father brian Thank you, Ethan. I'm truly enjoying this time and looking forward to more into thinking. Absolutely. So with that, like something you like, spend some time thinking and enjoy this week.